obviously like leading up to the fight last weekend, you had a, it was another cancelled bout for you, wasn't it? You were uh, scheduled to face Feliuardo. Yeah. And obviously last year you had the title fight sort of set up and then fall through. Are you getting quite frustrated with these at this point with the amount of people that are out of your fights? Yeah, that's that's why I needed just to get that fight in. A lot of people would have said that's a silly move when you're also like the de facto number one contender, you can sit out and wait for the title. A lot of people would say it's a silly move to take that fight against a guy with a lot of finishes, but I needed to fight. I can't go two fight camps back to back and not fight. Yeah. Just need and then if it's gonna play in well when I finally get this title fight because instead of sitting out and getting rusty, I'm still in my rhythm. You seen that reminded me of sort of almost like the Leon Edwards situation, where he's sort of been set up for like a title fight for a while, but like has to go down the rankings to fight like Al Mohammed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like people lower down because no one at the higher ranks wanted to sort of wanted to fight him. Yeah, it all it reminds me because one of the few books I've ever read. You know, I've read that Hungry Caterpillar book. I've read Bravo Two Zero by Andy McNabb, and I've read Chuck Liddell's autobiography. And he's talking about a situation where. He didn't want to wait for the title fight with Tito because Tito was out injured, so he took a fight with Barbalou, which is a dangerous fight. But he just explained his mentality. If Barbalou beats me, then I shouldn't have been fighting for the title anyway. And it's that, that same mentality. Yeah. One of the few things I've... One of the few books I've read, and that stuck with me. Yeah, were you very confident then going into it? Yeah. And it went mostly, mostly according to plan. Tire him out in the first round, finish him in the second. I'm making a habit of second round finishes. Yeah. More confident so than you normally would have been? Or are you always quite relaxed going into your fights? I'm always confident and relaxed. You know, that all just comes from preparation. You can't do mindset nonsense and psychology, whatever, and then expect to feel confident in there. It comes from preparation. That's all it is. It's, you can't complicate. Yeah. You said it went according to the game plan. What, what was the game plan going into? Pretty much, uh, you know... As expected, I was expecting him to come out hard, throw hard strikes and look for big takedowns, which is what he did. So I kind of had to ride that wave, you know, like risk mitigation in the first and then it just ramp the pace up. Like Harry's always saying it in the corner in the, after that second round, after that first round even, we accelerate, we ramp it up, we ramp it up. So it's not like just trying to meet him head on and just butt heads with him, but actually just trying to like outpace him and the shots just pile up and pile up and pile up. Like if you watch a Petty Yan fight, Petty Yan's one of my favourite fighters and I kind of mimic a lot of his style. That style where sometimes you don't think he's doing as much and then suddenly by the second round, their opponents are drowning and they can't handle the pressure. It seems like he sort of takes a round at the start to work out what his opponents, you get a read on his opponent. And it seemed like you were trying to do sort of something similar in the first round. Yeah, just... Breaking them down, chipping them away, and then the big shots come. Like, if you watch, you know, I'm on this five-fight win streak now, two in Bellator, three in Cage Warriors. Of those four wins, two of them are second-round... Fin- uh, of those five wins, four of them are second-round finishes. So, I'm kind of building the method, building the formula. Yeah. Were you surprised that you went for the takedown in the first round? No. Were you expecting to try and keep it on the feet? Um, I was expecting him to swing a bit more. I was actually a bit glad when he shot in the takedown, because I could just weigh on his arms and put a bit of weight on it. The other, th- the other thing I wasn't happy with, though, is I kind of sat on the fence a bit. I know I needed to wear him out, but, you know, I like watching those old fights of Demetrius Johnson and Anderson Silva, where even if their back's on the fence, they're making it hell for their opponent. They're slamming knees in, elbows, and there was lots of opportunities. I was just a bit slow on the trigger, so I know what I need to work. Yeah, you know, like, you get, like the underhook's quite easy. And then after that, he wasn't able to move down two legs and finish it. Yeah, I could get the underhooks. I just didn't want to like overcommit on the underhooks unless I knew that takedown was there. Because I've seen him headlock throw people, and you know he has that strong judo background. I didn't want to like rush in deep underhooks and then get stuck under him, tired out in, in uh, like that Kezakatami position, or taking shots or risking any of those like arm bars from that position. I didn't want to rush to the underhooks if it wasn't really there. So I kind of like kept them shallow towards the end of the round. When I felt that takedowns there, that's when I shot them through. Yeah. But you know, there was a lot of opportunities for strikes. I was I was just slow on the trigger with. Yeah, after he came off the fence, it looked like he was swinging with all he had to try and finish it as quick as he could. Like. Yeah, I think 
you know, people say, did he have a full camp? That's just, just his style. When I watched any of his fights, that's his style. He tries to get him out of there quick, which is why he's got quite a lot of finishes. With his 10 wins at like seven or finishes. So that's just had to ride that wave. I knew it was never going to be comfortable that first round, but to be honest, it was more relaxed than I thought it would be. I thought it would be really like, okay, I'm going to get hit with some big shots. I'm going to have to scramble out of more bad positions, but it was fairly smooth. Yeah. Uh, so you, um, so you went for the. I think he shot after he landed in a big blow on him. He went for the takedown, and um, you went for the guillotine. You often try go for, but wasn't able to succeed this time. I think he sort of managed to ex escape from it. Yeah. Oh, it, did he roll over to escape? Yeah, he just... rolled to his back, which is kind of the dilemma. You want to put them in with that guillotine. You don't want to go all or nothing in it. You want it feeding into taking the top position. So as, as he rolled, I just took top position, hit him with some strikes. But then funny there, when I was in top position, I was remembering what Graham Boylan said, the, the, manager, the president of Cage Warriors, the day before at the weigh-in, he says, the UFC are in town, there'll be UFC talent scouts or whatever you call them there. And I remember being on top for literally five or ten seconds thinking, this is boring, I've got to get to work. <laughs> and I let him up and just kind of chase him down and hit him. To be fair as well though, if I'd just stuck on top, he might have just been able to squeeze my arms down. So that's what you see a lot of times. People get a top position and they kind of burn themselves out just holding themselves down. They let their opponents recover. If nothing was there, which it didn't feel like too much was there, I could get a few little strikes off. It's like, he's rocked, let him up. Yeah, we think about that before the fight, the fact the UFC is in town. Well, people had said, put a show on. people had said this, and then I just thought, no, nah, I'm just going to fight how I fight, you know. I'm not, I'm not one usually for any extrinsic factors, like, affecting my performance. But then when I was in the fight, and, you know, especially after the first round, was just kind of like a, a grindy little clinch exchange. Not the most exciting. It was, it was playing in my head a little bit in the second round, like, got to get to work, got to get to work. Any second I wasn't throwing punches, I'm like, this is being lazy, this is being lazy, got to get to work. So I was on top and I think, nah, I'll let him up. And just start hitting him with elbows and knees. Yeah. Obviously, no, you got the win. Are you waiting for the, waiting for the call now? The, uh, for that title fight? Yeah, I needed to talk with Ian Dean, the matchmaker, and see what the next step is. I think June, Belfast, that's when Joe McColgan said he wants to come back. So let's do that. I think that's booked already, that Kate Warriors is... Is that Bucks Ray, the yeah. Warriors in Belfast? Yeah, that was announced on the night. So that was announced on the night, I thought. So that just makes sense. Yeah, you and Joe on that card? Yeah, that would be the best. Yeah. I like Joe McColgan, I like his style, but I want the belt. Yeah. It's, it's been too long now. It's been delayed and delayed and delayed. I need that fight. Yeah, it's sort of Mehdi Ben Latadar out of the picture at this point, do you think? I haven't, I haven't heard from him in a while. Don't know what he's up to. Uh, also it's been a very long time not necessarily through any fault of his own it's been a long time since he's competed you know you need to you need to be active and you need to be coming off wins which he is they're just a long time ago now there's been a lot more active people in the division yeah. I think it was like the first of the second trilogy was his last fight and that's quite a while ago now yeah and obviously you've tried to stay as active as you can despite some of your fights falling through yeah, that's, that's what I've been wanting, act, activity. Because it's like, I don't want to get to that point later in my life and think, oh, I, I wish I took more fights. I wish I didn't sit out and wait around for that fight. Because you've only got so long to fight. And they're just those fight days, those fight nights, their experience is like no other. So I don't want to try and deprive myself of that to sit around and negotiate stuff and wait for this opportunity in five months' time or whatever. When the opportunity is there to fight, I want to fight. Do you enjoy the whole experience sort of leading up to the fight? Yeah, some people sort of say, like, they hate it and they just want to get in the cage and they just want to fight. But obviously other people, perhaps yourself, like sort of like the build-up, like the whole experience getting up to that point. See, training is... I love training and I'm going to train until I'm dead. It's like... It's like when you heard it, like how Jack LaLanne died when he was 95 but he was training two days before he died it's like yeah. just insane amount of training that's what I like to do with my life so I love the training 
other stuff, having to diet quite a bit and, well, I was going to say sacrifice social events, but I don't do any social events. <laughs> I'm, a fucking, I'm a fucking hermit, so I don't really have to sacrifice that, but it's more like the diet and sometimes when you get really pushed to that edge, it's that fine line you're walking in fight camp where you push a little bit more, you might just break yourself and go over the edge. You push a little bit a little bit less and you don't hit that peak performance but when you're walking that fine line it's you're kind of looking forward to a rest but you know I love I love the whole process even the unpleasant stuff like dieting and cutting weight they're not pleasant and a lot of people you know you'd rather not do them but you do get a lot from them mentally I find yeah last last Friday during the fight you landed a couple big shots that you know quite clearly rocked him were you expecting the fight to be stopped sooner than it was? No, that seemed like a perfectly fine stoppage, to be honest. Because he was still throwing back. He was still attempting his takedowns. And, you know, if you know... You've got to give certain fighters a benefit of the doubt if you know they're tough and they've come back before in other fights, So, which Capera had done early in his career. It was the right time to stop the fight. I was just thinking... I just had, like, different lines of planning where... If I'm hitting him with my hands and it's not taking him out of there, then I've got to hit him with knees and elbows. And if, which is what finally stopped the fight, the knees and the elbow, the tie clinch. Because, you know, you can take punches. He was against the fence, weren't he? Yeah. Knee his you can, yeah, you can take punches, but no ref's going to let you take knees and elbows just unanswered against the fence. And then I, the next line, what I was thinking is, if that wasn't getting him out of there, I'd have to take him down and crucifix him and pin him and then hit him with strikes in a position where he can't really defend him, and then no ref's going to let him stop. Like, no ref is going to let them keep going through that. But I didn't need to get to that point. Like, the knees and elbows was enough. I was actually watching... It was like a, it was like a, a reel of Anderson Silva finishes, and the, the few ones with Rich Franklin pop up, and that was the kind of finish I was going for, where, you know, you're fighting someone tough, you don't want to swing with both hands left, right, left, right, gas yourself out and leave yourself open. It's that kind of finishing where it's like each shot is considered. Okay, it's, I've landed that shot, we've ended up in a clinch. Okay, I tie this up, I'm landing a knee with this side because his head's that way. I'm landing a knee with this side, I'm landing an elbow with this side. Where if it took all night to finish him, I would have been fresh to do so because I'm in that rhythm of boom, 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 picking the shots instead of just swinging and leaving myself open or getting taken down off a, off a big wide punch. Yeah. I think you said beforehand you, you knew that he was sort of known for his heart. Is that something you were expecting then? It was something I was looking forward to. Because him with these second round finishes, it's kind of been a bit, I'm getting into it, and then it's over. Like, I felt that with the Truman fight. I was only really letting my combinations fly, like, towards the end of the first, into the second. And I, I wanted to kind of do that all night, and then I land the body shot and it's over. Donal, I'm only really starting to let the ground and pound go and let the shots fly. And then his head's there for the guillotine, and then it's over. This one, I got a little extra minute, minute and a half to get that time in there and get the combinations going. You know, it was, uh, I really enjoyed that, yeah. It was still stopped at the right time, but I enjoyed that extra bit to work. Yeah. Would that sort of be your dream then, where you, you get the title fight next, and you're able to go a, maybe the, a few more rounds, so you're able to demonstrate all your, all your skills and get, get those combinations going? It's not really about demonstrating the skills. It's just there's such a fine out, finite amount, amount of time to compete. You know, 15 minutes after a huge camp is really nothing. You look at how much tennis players play. They play like three matches a, a week, and each match is two to four or five hours. You know, if you love tennis, you get to play an insane amount when you're a tennis player. MMA, you're not actually competing that much. So... In the last three fights, each one stopped around the seven minute, seven, eight minute mark. All that camp for seven to eight minutes of fighting, it's, that's why I want to be active, to get more time in the cage. You only get so much and it's, there's no feeling like it, which is why I'd love to, I want to go for the finish each time, but I'd love a five round fight, someone who can give it back for the full five rounds. Yeah. You've been straight back into training. Yeah. Monday after that. Monday. Yeah. So Monday I got back. Monday I was just like acid reflux all day off of eating palm oils and 
baklava and all kinds of shit. Monday was just, it was a nice day, so I went in the patio and did like 20 rounds of shadow boxing, but not even like sensible, logical stuff, just just combos from Ongbak, really, but with a big kite on me. So it's, I'm doing elbows and flying knees, burping, you know, like big belly. All right. <laughs> big belly full of pommel. So I'm doing like elbows and flying knees and stuff, and then just burping, having a little bit of heartburn, but I'm resetting, doing that for 20 rounds. You know, hands being a little bit sore, throwing a, throwing a lot of left hooks, so I've kind of still drilled the grappling, but I've just avoided hitting with it. Just relaxed workouts. I really like these workouts where you're full of calories. You don't have to kill yourself. You can, you can do a three hour workout if you want. You'd never do a three hour workout in fight camp because you need intensity, but you know, you can just do a three-hour workout and you don't have to kill yourself the full time. You can just go down these rabbit holes of, I'm going to practice elbows with this arm. I'm going to practice this spinning elbow I've never done. I'm going to practice these toe kicks because I watched some Masashi Kimura fighting in the recent K1 tournament and just nerd out over stuff. Yeah. Where in a fight camp, you have to be optimized to your style. You don't want to be adding loads of different influences too yeah. close in a fight camp. You said about not doing a three hour workout. Are you someone who believes in like never doing more than sort of five rounds or 25 minutes because you're never gonna go more than 25 it, minutes? It depends. Minutes. If you're way out from a fight, what you're doing in your training is you're not going that hard in your sparring. You're not going that hard in your rolling and well, you can still go a bit harder in your rolling and wrestling. What it's more about is getting those exposures to loads of different positions, trying different moves, setting like a set objective each round. I've got this one sweep I want to do. Even if it's not there, I'm going to just try and do it over and over and over again. Whereas closer to a fight, it is more about mimicking the intensity of three five-minute rounds or five five-minute rounds. And then you don't want to just be glued to one move or trying stuff that you might not pull off in a fight. You want to be optimizing your game. So it's like out of camp, you add new tools, new weapons, build yourself physically, you know, do like the strength work you wouldn't do that close to a fight. And then in camp, it's just about optimizing performance, sharpening up. Yeah. Do you think you injured your hand or is it just a bit sore from all them left hooks? Yeah, I think it's just a bit sore. I've been wrestling. I was wrestling last night. I've been doing pull-ups and weights. I've been doing some grappling. I've not been punching with it, but that's probably just the best, just to give it a little rest. Mm. I've just been shadow boxing with it, doing loads of toe kicks on the bag. Yeah. Is there anything coming from that fight on Friday that you want to work on now, like throughout your training, perhaps, and any skills you want to sharpen up maybe that you've learned from that fight? Just being a bit sharper on some of them, uh, some of them clinch strike opportunities, even when my back's to the fence or when I'm maybe in a negative position, there were still opportunities to strike that I wasn't taking, partly because he was going that hard to go for the takedown, I didn't want to risk going up on one leg to knee and then getting swept. But there were still opportunities that were slowing the trigger in. So working more of them. Like them clinch positions? Yeah, just a little bit of the Demetrius Johnson stuff. Yeah. Like if you watch his fights, that's stuff like that. And then I've got some other surprises that I didn't really need to use. You know, the left hook was there, so I'm just going to keep landing the left hook. So I've got some other surprises that I've been building for a good few months now. Like even before the first Medi fight that I haven't needed to use in that fight. So I'm looking forward to getting them used in the cage. Yeah. You were uh, excited for this title fight then? Obviously you expect it coming next? Yes. I love the, I just want to have that 5-5 five fives feeling. You know, if I finish it in the first or second round, that's what I want to finish. But I've seen people have come out the other side of these five round fights and I always want to know what it feels like. Like I've had a tough three, three round fights, but I've never had that five round fight experience. Obviously I want to finish it first, but if I get that experience of it and it's a good fight, you know, I'd love to see what that feels like. Yeah. Anything you sort of want to say to Jay? Um, I hope you're coming back. I hope you whatever was an issue before is sorted so we can go five rounds. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, appreciate you chatting to us.